then so somebody stood up and started talking and then when I saw him a voice to me is coming from my heart was in a voice said that this is your husband to be this is touched by heaven Everyday encounters with God, those moments when heaven and earth collide and we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little, God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome to episode 86, glad you're here for this one. God, the unmatchable matchmaker. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. This has to be, this has to be, wouldn't you think, one of God's most favorite jobs in the world? (laughs) I mean, of all the jobs that he has, he's got a lot of jobs, doing a lot of things, but bringing two people together because he sees all the possibilities of a great marriage. Get this person here to meet this person there, and when we cooperate, wow, the power, the power of two people working together and seeing the big picture of things, that's just, that's just gotta be so much fun for God the unmatchable matchmaker. That said, in all honesty, right, most marriages are not made in heaven. But even then there's hope. Even then there's hope. Jesus tells us in Revelation, I make all things new. Just let me in. Watch what I can do. I I can make plan B work better than plan A. Just let me in. So when we get to May in this story, and May sees the big picture too, as as you'll hear, we hear about how you'll see it, you'll feel it, love, Love is more than a feeling, isn't it? It's so much more than a feeling. May grew up in the Philippines, most of her life in the Philippines. She and her family now live in beautiful San Diego. And you're gonna love May. You gotta love, well, you gotta love May because you know she found this podcast, Touched by Heaven, what, two weeks ago? And she's listened to every episode. In just two weeks, like all, that's for eight hours I listened to. Just your- You, you went over, eight, you, you consumed <laughs> over 80 episodes in two weeks? <laughs> Yes. Do you like the For, show? Of course. <laughs> in the Philippines, May grew up in a very traditional Catholic family. And family was very important to the point that she thought even as a young person about making sure she chose correctly her future husband. And when we were younger, my mom would always encourage us like, oh, to pray to St. Joseph, like, you know, because he would guide you to a good husband or a vocation. And so... Since high school, I started praying, like, if, if I am for married life, um, protect my protect my husband-to-be, something like that. And when the right time comes, let me know that he's the one, something like that. At age 26, May is out there in the workforce. So one time, our vice president um, visited. And the VP says to May, May, I need you to go over to such and such hotel where the seminar is going on. Just go over there and see if they need anything from us. So she goes over. There's about 50 people in the room doing their work. And then so I went in there. And then so somebody stood up and started talking. And then when I saw him, a voice, to me, it's coming from my heart. Like in a voice said, this is your husband to be. And I said, I just don't know. Like, I... He's not kind of my, he's not my type kind of thing. I asked um, one of the managers, like, who is that guy? Like, and he said, like, oh, that's um, Dr. Dylan, the, vi- uh, the veterinarian from, from Manila. Oh, okay. So then I just like, okay, whatever. I, I, don't, I don't really care that much yet at the time. There was an inner voice. Somehow there was this inner voice saying, that's the guy. Yeah, like, oh, this is your husband to be. Wow. And I I brushed it aside. I have a boyfriend and we're so like, you know, everything was smooth. We know each other's families already. Like, you know, he goes to ours often. And I also visited um, his family and like everything. And they're starting saying, when is the wedding? When is blah, blah, blah. And all these things. So a couple of months later, after the seminar, uh, May gets transferred to another office on another island. And guess who's there? Dr. Dillon. Like, you know, because I grow up uh, very Catholic, I go to church every day. I mean, every every Sunday. And I ask him, like, do you go to church? Like, are you Catholic? Like, oh, I am Catholic. Like this, like, um, 
but I don't really like practice my faith. So I started like encouraging him, why don't you go with me to church? Like, you know, it's like, oh, okay. So I, I knew that he really is a good person. Wait, but, but that's not- that's kind of a that's kind of a bold step for someone seeing another guy. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> but I don't have any I don't have any um malice at all. Like me, it's so like it's just you know No, I know like, I'm kidding with you, but so but so you didn't have any feelings there, but it was just like you wanted to s- support him in his faith. In a way, yeah, something okay. like that. But then, of course, when you see the person every day, like something different comes up, like, you know. Meanwhile, boyfriend number one is starting to put a little pressure on May. Like, you know, when's this marriage thing going to happen? A year away? Are we two years away? Exactly when? And May decides to share this with her new friend, Dr. Dylan here, just about this boyfriend and starting to put the pressure on about marriage. and And then you just go quiet. Like, she didn't say anything started to become so serious and you just like you know what i i want to propose like i want to i want to marry you like <laughs> wait what like yeah i want to marry you like no i have a boyfriend then that voice started to come back to me like this is your husband to be and i never told anyone about that voice i never mentioned it to anybody and you and you kind of heard it again yeah, and and you know, like that, this kind of like affection starting. I I keep on denying it, but I started to care. But of course, I still have my boyfriend. <laughs> okay, like it's it was super hard for me. A dilemma for me. Boyfriend number one wants to settle down. New guy, Doctor Dylan also is talking about settling down. What does May want? What does God want? What's this inner voice all about? So she heads back home, another island, to talk to mom and dad. And my dad said, well, what's in your heart? And I said, like, I'm so confused. I don't know. Uh, you have to pray. You have to pray hard because that's not, that's not, um, that is not right and that's not fair. A very troubled and confused May decided to just get away. Just get away, get away from both these guys and just go talk to God for a while. Have some discernment. Uh, think about this. Pray about this, about which way she wanted to go. And she said just that to uh, Dr. Dylan. I told him that I'm going to go um, discernment. I told him that um, I'm going to pray and I'm going to I'm going to lay before God all this like you and the other guy, whatever it is, whatever you will know after so on my birthday i went to go and um, schedule for discernment with um, holy spirit congregation sisters this place that may is going to get away to is a convent in fact her sister is a sister in this convent but she wasn't there at the time for this discernment may is going there to think about this to talk to god about this she needs an answer which direction is she going to go so there you want them to help you Yes. The nuns at this convent have no idea why May is there, other than she's come to pray, looking for discernment in some issues, but they have not been told the particulars. But also, there's one sister that assisted me. She, I remember we just sat down, and she told me, like, whatever your purpose or whatever your reason why you're here, don't worry, because the Holy Spirit will guide you all the way through. All you have to do is to open your heart, open your mind, and be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And I said yes to all of this. And the nun said, go ahead, you can write your questions. So I only have two questions at that time. My first question was, what do you want from me, Lord? Since I have my sister was a nun. I said, if you call me right now to become a nun, I would say yes to you. But if you are going to ask me, I want to raise my own family. I want to get married. I want to be a mom. I want to be a wife. And that's my first question. The second one is, if I am for married life, who between the two 
will be my husband. Okay, so, so she's listening to your two. You're telling her this, right? You're telling her this? No. Oh, this is just your conversation with the Holy this Spirit. Is this is me, and uh, this is my conversation to myself, and of course with God. Like, okay. Just like, just go ahead, write questions, and like, you know, just be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and okay. that's it. Are you in a church at the time when you're having this conversation it's, with God? We were in the chapel. Chapel, okay. So okay, then, so you're having a conversation with God, Jesus. Who who are you? Who are you kind of picturing yourself with? God, Jesus, Mary. Who who are you talking to? It was Jesus. You're talking to Jesus, okay? It, it was Jesus. The sister gave me like a lot of activities, and one striking activity was like she gave me like lists of uh, Bible verses, and in one of the Bible verse, I was just so struck. Like it was Ruth three verse eleven. And it says, don't worry, Ruth, I will do everything you ask. As everyone in town knows, you are a fine woman. And when I read it, like, oh my gosh, God talking to me. Like, <laughs> this is me. Like, I mean, this is the first question. This is the answer of the first question. Like, I, I, I want to be, I want to to get married, I want to become a mother, I want to become a wife, and this is what it's telling me, like, I will do everything you ask. Okay. And then so he, she gave me another activities and all these things. Like, and the day is about to end and I don't have the number to answer yet. And that kind of like worries me. And then so the last activity, she told me like, okay, um, let's go ahead and go to this different chapel and in that chapel, like, it's very dark. All you could hear is like the water flowing and birds chirping. It's pitch black. You can hear the water, you can hear the birds, and there's a spotlight on the host, on the Eucharist, on the altar. So it's you and Jesus having a conversation, basically. The Eucharist, it was so beautiful. I just saw Jesus in there. The sister told me, uh, this will be your last activity for the day. And you listen carefully. I'm going to play a song. And you pay attention to the lyrics of the song. And I said, like, Lord, this is, this is all about you. You know, it's, I just, I'm just here. And when the, when the song starting, I just cried. It's, um, the song was, I'll be there for you. It's sung by it's sung by Martin Rivera. It's a Filipino um, singer, and the lyrics was like, "When you wake up each morning and you'll find like calling, I'll be there for you." But what was striking because that same song is always Doctor Dylan always sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doomed. Oh yeah. He always plays that song, and he would always sing along. He's a good singer. He he, mm. he really sings good. Like. And he sings that every time. And he would always say, oh, this is for you, like that. And, oh, my gosh, I cried. Yeah, because it was answered, but I cried because of my boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to hurt anybody. I know. I know. Exactly. It was just so crazy. So that was my birthday. And then so I, I went home and my dad would like, ask me, like, how is it? Like, Oh, it was really good. And I, I, I received a lot of light and it was so, just so hard, Dad. And we went out dinner and went, came back and like, I don't know how to do it, Dad. Like, you know, but, well, you're in the right age. I was 26 at the time. Yeah. That was my 26th birthday. My dad would always tease us like, when can I see uh, little kids running around this house? Like, you know, like, oh, come on, Dad. It's not your time. My dad told me that listen to what God is telling you. But it was so hard at the time. It was just so crazy. I remember when my boyfriend came and my mom was with me upstairs. And like we were praying. We were praying the rosary before that. And then she told me, um, just do what you think you need to do. I'll be praying here. Still, just go down and talk to your boyfriend. And of course, it was never easy. It was it was just so crazy. But um, so that night, you broke up with your boyfriend. 
Yes. So he knew first, and then, and then, how do we begin the conversation with Mr. Dylan? And what's his first name? Uh, Mandy Armando. And again, for the third time, when she saw Mandy, here comes that inner voice again. That's your future husband. So he was really like waiting for it too. Like, how was your prayer? How was you know all this? And I said, like, I I think um, he, God asked me that you are the one. Up to that point, I'm sure you probably hadn't said to him. By the way, there's been this crazy little voice telling me that you're going to be my husband. I doubt you had told him that yet, right? Yeah, I did tell him. When did you tell him that? I told him about what happened in my in my retreat. Okay, okay. So you told him after you'd broken up with your boyfriend. That that's what I meant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He didn't know that before. Now then, how about uh, that? How do you? How did you bring up the song that you heard over there that he's always singing? Well, um, because he loves to sing, especially. Uh, I mean, you the- you made him smile. You made him smile when you said, "By the way, the song they gave me is the one you're always singing." It's like, oh yeah. man, it's like that's like a slam dunk. I got you now. It's like God's working with me here, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I, I, t- I talked to your husband an hour ago, and you know how much he paid to have them do that song. You have any idea what he paid to have them sing that? It's a crazy, crazy amount. I can't even tell you. <laughs> that's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. I mean, that's 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 God letting you know your angel. That's that's pretty cool. You know, and, 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 you know, this is, I've, I've heard this kind of story before where somebody will say, they'll get this feeling that's your husband, that's your wife, which uh-huh. is probably what we should be hearing and should be feeling. There should be something on a, of a spiritual realm that says, that's the one. I trust God because I don't know much about this Dr. Dylan person, but the other guy I, I knew, but, but of course, knowing him now, of course, I I just thank him. He's not a perfect husband, but he's an ideal one. Love that. Not a perfect husband, but he is an ideal one. And did you hear what she said there? You know, I didn't really know Dr. Dylan that well. But to have that much trust that that inner voice from God was leading her to the right place, to have that much trust in God. You know, this story highlights one of the problems when you have a church that's losing people, that when it comes time to, I think I want to settle down now, and God isn't part of the equation, part of the conversation, then then, then it can be, it, I, it feels good, you know, and love is more than a feeling. Marriage, more than a feeling. In fact, <laughs> you know, if you've been married for a while, uh, it's more than a feeling when you get down to the brass tacks of day-to-day living, right? It's more than a feeling. We, we were married, like, um, like, I think just, probably just five months after that event five months yeah five months and they were married and was it just perfect from the beginning may will tell you no mandy will tell you no no it took some time getting together in fact they had some little interesting uh religious battles at the beginning there sometimes when we disagree or like you know he would say like ah oh, you're you're a pharisee like that and i would say oh yeah i am pharisee married to a pagan and it's like so you okay. guys, you guys are cutting at each other, Pharisees and pagans. And <laughs> you're you're jabbing at each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm like basically, but he's into his faith now. He's he's really <laughs> so so eager. So so the pa- the pagan came around, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, with a little help from the Pharisee. That's good. Uh, that's good. Um, yeah. I I'm so I admire I admire you so much for this discernment that you went through. That you, you know, you went through this process. I mean, that you treated it seriously because it is serious. It is important, you know, who you who you say you want to spend the rest of your life with. You treated oh, yeah. it. You treated it as an important element of your life, and and asked God into your life, and He answered. I mean, you went seeking, and He gave you your answer. He actually was giving you your answer before you even went seeking. That's that's how adamant God was about it. Yeah, it, it was it was beautiful because at that time, if God would say like. Oh, um, I want you to become a nun or whatever way, whatever message he would give me. I would say yes to him. But he he knew what's in my heart too, what I really desire. Because, you know, I had four four year relationship, but um of course there was no sexual um relations between us. So it's kinda like if you will call me as 
as a nun to serve you, like I would say yes to you. But if you want to ask me, Lord, I, I want to become a mother. I want to have a family of my own. Like, is like, that, is that, would you say you were a typical Filipino that way? Or do you think you were an anomaly that you had saved yourself for, for marriage? Um, I wouldn't say a typical Filipino, but I would still believe that there are still um, Filipinas like me, like into their faith. And, um, well, it's, it's like this. Um, just a little background. My parents... My parents um, are very, very really into their into their faith, and they are practicing also with their faith. And it's not hard for us to believe that there is God because they concretize their faith into their action. And so, whatever they say, whatever we kind of like believe them, like you know, like your body is a temple of God, and you have to you have to respect your body and all these things. So you have to, you know. Don't disrespect it. All these kind of things. So you have to save the best when you're in your, if you're for your marriage and all these things. So that that kind of that kind of um, thinking when we were when we were young. So uh, kind of like yeah, why not? I mean, if we really love each other, people would always say you try to control yourself. Like like you know, save it. Like. You know, respect your buddy. And it's, so. it's so rare today. You know, it's it's just so. It's, and oh, yeah. It it's, is. It you know, it's, what's interesting, too, is the stats. All the stats for a successful marriage say, uh, in, and especially if it's two virgins marrying, pff, slam dunk. You're, you're going to be married forever. There's just, it's a slam dunk. Um, uh-huh. the, if you don't live together first, much greater mm-hmm. chance of not having a divorce. It's supposed to be the other way around. No, we're testing. We're just testing. We want to make sure it's okay. And it's oh, just the opposite. The stats say just the opposite. It's it's remarkable. I mean, all the stats are are with what the, the with the route you went. Not that anybody is uh-huh. gonna is gonna follow you because <laughs> it just sounds. You sound so nineteen. What? You pick a decade. Nineteen. <laughs> 1940 about 1910 1940 into the 50s made it maybe and then all hell broke loose in the 60s you know so it is it's it's so rare it really is but it but it works yeah but i but i still believe there are still um ladies who are like that like at this at this age i I would still believe that there are still um women who wants to like you know to save and lead discerning and you know for for married life so you didn't find it diff- you didn't find it difficult to live that life before right. you were before you were married to stay stay virginal and all that you didn't you didn't find that all that difficult. Of course, it was difficult. <laughs> With all the temptations, of course, it is difficult. Good for you, girl. That's honest. <laughs> That's honest. That's great. Drives yeah, you would... it drives you nuts, doesn't it? Yeah, of course yeah. it's difficult because you have all the chances that you could say yes or let's do this. Like, anyways, we'll get married. Like, of course, it's difficult. Well, how about the but, pagan? The pagan was saying, what are you waiting for? Oh, he would always respect me. He would always <laughs> say, no. <laughs> good for him. You got a good guy there. You got a good guy. Oh, yeah, he is. He is. He is really. He's a good father. He's a good, he's a good husband. He's not perfect, as I've said. I mean, I'm not either. But, but yeah, there are disagreements. But um, it was never an issue. No matter how disagreements we had, we never mentioned about in the first place, that's not an option to have a divorce, no matter how crazy sometimes. Yeah, you're locked in. You're locked in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, it's it's a vocation. For me, it's really a vocation. And if you are called for a certain vocation, then the same thing, that's it. That is holy. That's I believe that's a blessing from God. And this is what I decide. This is what I prayed for. Yeah, that's why it's viewed as a sacrament. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it is. There's an oath. There's an oath with God. There's a... Yeah, you make an oath to God. This is it. Exactly. Um, do you give advice about this kind of thing? I mean, the, do people ask you about this? Is there is there advice you can give to to a a young woman or a young man about about or even an older person about who they select? It's so important. It's so important. It is really important. One time, I I was asked to speak to a um, discernment, like a vocation um, conference. Like there is a priest. Or a seminarian that um, spoke, and there's a married person also. So I was one, um, and I, I shared this this experience. And there was one lady that um, contemplating of becoming a sister, 
But then when when she heard my story, she <laughs> she kind of like um pray over again, and lo and behold, she received a a passage. It's not the same, not not the same, but a different. I forgot the passage that she mentioned because we met um, another time, and she said like she's considering like a married life because at that time um. I think she she has a boyfriend at the time, but she's contemplating whether to to enter into a religious life or a married life. I said, like, oh, wow. like God bless you. And right now they have they have a daughter now, ten <laughs> year old daughter. So yeah, you had you had impact there. You had impact. You yeah, it, it, I think the beautiful part is that like um, the power of prayer and. The trust also, I think, because like it's hard for me because I was choosing between two goods, two good guys. So that's why it's really hard. Um, when before our, our first baby came, we kind of like also into the same boat already. Like um, we became so obsessed also biblical parenting. So I think that's what we, we that it's not I think, but I believe that's the direction that God wants us. So we started to uh, read the Bible often. You know how sometimes people would say like, oh, the Catholic doesn't read Bibles. Then That's not really true. I don't really believe in that because there are Catholics who, could, who would really like read Bibles. We became advocates of biblical parenting. And uh, that is what we shared also when we were in the Philippines. You know how to raise your kids according to the Bible. So until now here that we're in San Diego, um, we are all like serving in the church and it's so interesting because like i remember during our wedding um i remember i prayed like i didn't even pray that all oh, like make our marriage work i just prayed that i want kids lord like plenty of them <laughs> and how many did you get we had four we had four <laughs> thanks may what's our takeaway what did god just say what didn't he say Love is more than a feeling, for sure. The trust in being open to his will, she was just so totally open to his will. It's not about me, it's about you. And isn't that what marriage is about and family is about? That's when you find out real fast, it's not about me, it's about you, about giving up oneself and sacrificing oneself. This, this episode, it just pours down the blessings of what can happen when, even when things aren't perfect, Jesus saying, I make all things new. Just bring me into it and watch what I can do. I can bring a Pharisee and a pagan together. (laughs) I I love this couple. I love this. I don't even know Mandy, but I love him. I love how he's just, he he was following too in his own way. And just such a beautiful reminder that when we're looking for relationship, any relationship, there is the unmatchable matchmaker. You pray, you trust. You watch, you're open to uh, everything he can do of bringing you and whoever and whomever is supposed to be in your life and my life. Just watch him, just watch him. He, he, he's having fun with this. He's spinning the whole universe around so that you meet that person over there when we're open, when we're open, when we're open and we follow. We just, we just have to follow and trust. And so thank you again, May, for your great story. And look, now you have another episode to listen. Oh, you already listened to the episode. Now you have to wait another week. Darn the luck. Hey, you have an encounter story, right? Get a hold of me at touchedbyheaven.net. You're the fuel for this podcast. Touchedbyheaven.net. I look forward to it. And my Patreon shout out this week goes to Samya Zuma. Thank you so much, Samya, for your support through Patreon. Go to episode 86, click your way through, or go to patreon.com and search for Trapper Jack. Thank you so much for listening and sharing these episodes of Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack.